Hi guys, it's Victoria and welcome back to Femhead. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the function of our hormones and how we can test them at home using today's sponsor, Prove. One huge misconception I had about conception before actually going through the process of trying to conceive was that it would just happen. It would happen right away as soon as you stopped preventing pregnancy, you would just get pregnant because I don't know about you, but I was led to believe growing up that I was just super fertile and if I looked at a guy the wrong way, boom, I'd be pregnant. But as we all know and have learned, or maybe you haven't learned yet and I'll let you in on a little secret, it does not happen like that. There is a lot more that goes into actually conceiving and getting pregnant and carrying a pregnancy through to birth than we once knew. While I know several couples who conceived the first time or you know, right away or really early on in the process, more often I hear from couples who it's taking them quite a bit longer. And I've had countless conversations with friends or acquaintances of like, oh, you know, we've been trying for a couple months now, it's just not happening and we're starting to get worried that something's wrong, blah, blah, blah. And I always like to say like, take a deep breath. Unfortunately, it takes way longer than we have been led to believe. And just because it doesn't happen in the first three months of trying doesn't mean it isn't going to happen. Not only do we think we're super fertile because of the messages we've been told growing up, but many of us don't know and haven't been taught much about our cycles, our fertility, or how any of that works. The most important part of our cycle, regardless of whether we're trying to conceive or just have a healthy menstrual cycle, is ovulation. When we think of menstrual cycles, a lot of us just think of periods, menstruation, the bleeding part of it, but ovulation is so important to our health and that really kind of goes unnoticed until you learn more about charting your cycles. And ovulation is so important. So the biggest question you wanna know, am I ovulating? Today, I'm gonna to take you through the process of confirming ovulation with today's sponsor, Prove, and then we'll talk about a few other aspects of our cycle that I often share with friends or acquaintances that ask me questions. So I use the Predict and Confirm kit from them. So this includes LH test strips and PDG test strips. And LH test strips are what you think of like the ovulation test strips that you hear of, and these are pretty easy to get your hands on, and I've used them a lot in the past um, and I just usually get pretty cheap ones from Amazon. The real fascinating part about this kit is the PDG test and I've never used anything like that. Once I confirm my LH surge and see the spike in temperature and all that, I just kind of like let it go. I never think about like, I wonder if that was a good quality ovulation or not. LH tests or ovulation tests are a really simple way to kind of have that heads up of when your most fertile time is. When that surge happens means that ovulation is right around the corner and that is your, the best time to have sex if you're trying to conceive. So PDG is a progesterone marker that is found in our urine. To test actual progesterone levels, you have to do a blood test, but this is an easy at home option. This will help us see if we've had a successful ovulation where egg has been released. And then the follicle where the egg was released is actually becomes what's called a corpus luteum and then start producing enough progesterone to keep the lining of the uterus in place long enough for what they call like it to be sticky enough for implantation to happen and that whole process to begin. Progesterone is very important once ovulation occurs for having a successful pregnancy or ha like those first like few weeks of everything going correctly. There's so much that goes into a successful pregnancy, but progesterone is so important early on. If there's not enough progesterone being produced in our body to complete all those very important tasks, we will start spotting early. We won't have a long enough luteal phase for the fertilized egg to implant and then send signals back to our body to keep producing that progesterone to keep everything in place so everything can start developing. Okay, so using Prove. I don't know if you guys have used LH tests before. Um, they're pretty straightforward. You want to figure out based on the length of your cycle when to start testing and they're pretty expensive and this one includes 15 so you can start testing like way before you think. Um, I once saw a handy little graph if I find it I'll like put it here of like if you have this length cycle start testing in this day. So I have had pretty short cycles recently just like my body's balancing out after having a kid and so so I think I started testing on cycle day 8. No cycle day. Oh I started testing on cycle day 10 excuse me. I'm <laughs> looking at my my chart. I like to lay them out like this. So on cycle day 10 I 
did a baseline test for both the LH test and the PDG test just to see like what my negative looks like. And if you don't know with LH tests, it's the opposite of what you think of with, with the pregnancy test. So when you're taking a pregnancy test, if there is any second line, that is a positive. That means you're pregnant. But with LH test, there's always a second line. It's just whether that second line is as dark or darker than the control line. As you can see on my baseline LH test, the test line is much lighter than the control line, meaning that it is a negative test. And you can see what a positive LH test looks like on mine. And then for the PDG test, a negative test means that there is a second line. Um, a positive, there is no second line. That's very important to understand with these, just how the tests work, because if you're so used to oh, second line means positive, whether it's a COVID test or whether it's pregnancy test, it's just really important to understand how each specific test works. So if this is your first time doing this, they recommend doing a baseline, that way you can see what your negatives look like and do this well before, like right after you stop bleeding. So you, you are very clear, like, yeah, I know for sure that I am negative, I'm not having an surge, I'm not having any of this, so you can have a very clear picture of what your negatives look like. Okay, and then you wanna take your LH test as you're approaching your fertile phase. You can take one in the morning and one at night. And if you're getting really close and you're like, man, that looks really positive that on this morning test, I'm gonna take an evening test. And that's what I did on cycle day 11, to just be like, oh yeah, like while that one's pretty close to positive, I'm for sure positive cycle day 11 at night. Okay, and then a PDG test, it's really important to use first morning urine. So as soon as you wake up, you want to use that urine. And so once you get a positive LH test, you want to start counting. And then day seven, eight, nine, 10, after that positive test is when you want to do your PDG test. Because I took pictures each day of my PDG test while I was down there, I'll insert them on the screen so you can see what they look like. You can also download their app and use that. Okay, now that we've confirmed that we're ovulating and we're having good quality ovulation, what else can we do? These are a few of the important things that I talk to friends or acquaintances or couples about when they're like, "I what, what should I do? Do you have any advice? And I always say these two things, the length of your luteal phase and the quality of your cervical fluid. Luteal phase length goes back to like the PDG test, like is there enough progesterone in your body being produced to have a long enough luteal phase and just like enough progesterone to get all those tasks done between getting the fertilized egg down and implanted and then keeping there long enough for it to send the signals back to your body to like keep producing progesterone. And luteal phase length and the amount of progesterone present are two things that I have struggled with countless times in the past. And I think that was actually one of my issues with getting pregnant with Theo was just, I wasn't having long enough luteal phases. I was having a lot of premenstrual spotting. And so I just knew there wasn't enough progesterone present to like make everything stick and start growing. Our luteal phase can last anywhere from 11 to 17 days. 10 or less is too short. And most people have 12 to 14 day luteal phases. This is actually how I knew I was pregnant with Lincoln before ever having a positive test. I, up until that point, I always had a 13 day luteal phase. It was like within a day or two, like 13 day luteal phase. Um, 14 wasn't uncommon, but it was rare. And so when I got to 16 days, I was like, hmm, yeah. I like, I knew, I was like, yep, it's time to get a pregnancy test. <laughs> Okay, and then this is the last element of today's video, good, juicy, quality cervical fluid. <laughs> People cringe when they think about cervical fluid, cervical mucus, oh man, but it's so important. And once you learn about it and learn the different variations, what they mean and what they can do, you're like, ah, bow down, bow down cervical fluid. Fertile quality cervical fluid is what is going to help your partner's sperm make it up to fertilize that egg. If you don't have fertile cervical fluid present or enough or the right quality, it acts more as a spider web trapping the sperm rather than like a slip and slide up to that egg. Our cervical fluid follows a pattern throughout our cycle and while it's unique person to person, it follows a similar pattern. After you finish bleeding, you usually are dry for a couple days. There's no cervical fluid present. And then you start producing the non-fertile cervical fluid. And so think of like sticky tacky cervical fluid or creamy lotion-y, but then liquid gold is that egg white quality cervical fluid that we're all looking for. Like that is baby making juice right there. Egg white cervical fluid, that's what you want. 
I don't have time today to go over ways in which I've worked to boost my cervical fluid when I was um, trying to conceive, but I will link that stuff down below. But having the knowledge of ovulation, cervical fluid quality, and luteal phase length will help you take that next step towards successfully conceiving a child when you want to, or just learning more about your body and having a healthy, balanced cycle. Once again, thank you to Prue for sponsoring today's video. It was really cool because I feel like my cycle's still a little weird, a little off, to know like, okay, even though my cycle length is shorter, I'm still having a good ovulation. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you learned something. I hope you had a little bit of encouragement if you're on this journey of trying to conceive a child because it can be so frustrating and disheartening, but stick with it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.